What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be continuing working on our Proxmox Zima board server. So if you've been following along, you know that we worked on Jellyfin for it. We set up a VM for that. We set up a ZFS pool. And today we're going to be continuing it by working on some networking stuff by making a Pi-hole instance. So we already use a Proxmox container for this. Pi-hole is pretty low for its needs on resources, so by using a container we'll be able to set it up just how we need without using too many resources that are available on the Zima board. So let's get right into it. So to start, we're gonna come into our Proxmox for our Zima board. And you see we do have Jellyfin running, so if I come over to server, the summary for the server, you see that I'm not really using a lot of CPU, but I am using a lot of memory. So we're gonna try to limit that, and we're gonna build out the container for the Pi hole. So I'm just gonna pull up the requirements for Pi hole, and then we're gonna get started. So the requirements for Pi-hole are really simple. They just need a minimum of two gigs free space or four gigs, which is recommended, and 512 megabytes of RAM. Pi-hole does usually run off a Raspberry Pi, which the Pi 3s had very little memory, so it works perfectly. And by setting it up in a container, we can do it just how we want. It does support a bunch of different OSs. We're gonna work with Ubuntu today because that's my favorite. And then we're gonna go from there. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is get the template for Ubuntu. So if you come over to your local drive, which is most likely going to be the one, you see it'll have CT templates. If you click on your other drives, it probably only has CT volumes, which is fine because we just need to download the template to use for the container. So we're going to click on CT templates. And you can see I downloaded a couple already, but you just click on the templates button and then you can search by whichever one you want. So if you want Ubuntu, you can just click search, click on it, and then click download. If you want ARM, um, if you want Arch, you can get Arch, you get Debian. They have all different versions. If I can type, then you can download your whatever ones you want. But I'm going to work with Ubuntu, so that's what I'm going to work with. So now we're going to go over to Create CT. And now it's going to pop up just like it normally would for making a VM. I'm going to make the host name, and then you're going to set the password for the container. So make sure you remember whatever this password is. I've had it a couple times where it gives me an issue that the password just doesn't take. Making a container is super simple, and if you have to have an issue with the password, just blow it out and start over. I have done it a couple times, and it's quick enough that it's not really that much of an inconvenience. You can add an SSH key if you want, but I don't need one, so I'm not going to. We're going to click next. Now we're going to select our templates. Our templates are stored on local, and then we're going to come over here and we're going to select our Ubuntu template we want. We'll click next again. So now we can select where we want to save the machine or the container. So I'm going to save it on my Z pool. I'm going to give it 8 gigs. We have plenty of room. I'm going to give it one core of memory because we can't give it anything less. Uh, one core of CPU, sorry. For memory, I'm going to leave it at 512 because I think that's plenty. Now for a network, we're going to give it DHCP. So it actually gets a network address. And if you're using IPv6, then you're going to have to set it up if you're using Slack or DHCP. I'm going to click Next again. And now for the DNS settings, I'm going to use it as host settings. And then we're all set, so I'm going to finish it. So I'm going to set up the container, and then we'll get right into it. The container gets made pretty quickly, and the really nice thing, unlike VMs, is that the OS is all set and ready to run. So I'm going to close this out. We're going to come over to the container. We're going to start it. And then if I come into the console, we're going to load right into Ubuntu. Now, I'm going to work out of the console for my container because I think it's just easier. I'm not going to set it up for SSH just because I don't really see it need SSH into this box just yet. If you do want SSH into it, you are going to need to add the root user to the SSH group or make a new user to add to the SSH group. Because by default, the root user won't be added to the SSH group. The username is root, and I set my password, and here I am logged in. So I'm just going to do an apt update, and I'm going to do an apt upgrade, and then we'll come back and start the Pi-hole install. So my upgrades are all set, so we're going to do a clear, and then I'm going to do IPA, and we can see I do have an address, and here it is right here for me. Like I said, I'm not going to SSH in, but I am going to start with the install. I have to just make sure my network is all working. If you come over to the Pi-hole site, you can just Google Pi-hole, or you can just go to the site. I will leave links in the description for this. We just come over to install and we get this page and it brings us to the github so the github has all the information for the install they have a curl script to do an automated install or you can do it step by step and use the curl script because it's just a lot easier 
First thing we do need to do is install curl. So I'm just gonna let this install and then we're gonna click yes so it does. And in a second we should be all set so now we're good. So I'm gonna hit clear again and then I'm just gonna paste in that command and install a pie hole. And we can see the pie hole installer is running because it gives us the pie hole logo. So I'm just gonna run through this and when it has the menus we're gonna pick it back up. So Pihole has the menus to go through. I've done this install a couple times on the channel, so I'm just gonna go through it quickly. So I'm just gonna click OK, OK, continue. We're gonna come down, select Cloudflare, click yes, 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 and then we're gonna show everything. And we're pretty much just set. If you want a more detailed install guide, I'll put a link below and a card. I did do a Pihole install a few months ago where I go into more detail about all the settings. So I'll put a card up in that in the corner and I'll put a link in the description so you can watch that if you want. This will run through and we'll pick it back up when we're all done. So now we can see that the install is all done and it's gonna give us the web page to access it. So I'm just gonna go over to that. So it's 192.168.50.10 slash admin. Make sure you add the admin in it. If you don't and if you just type in the IP address, it'll actually try to redirect you. Uh, Firefox isn't going to open it because it's not nice, but usually it'll tell you are you trying to access you know the Pihole site and Pihole will detect it. They do give us the default password, which is that, or I'll show you a trick so we can just reset it right now. So I'm going to click OK, and then we're going to do Pihole tech A tech P. That's going to ask us for a new password. So I'm going to set that. Now it's been set, so I can come back over to Pihole and log right in. And now our Pihole instance is running. And we did use that new password that we just set. One last thing that I want to show you with the Pihole container is if you're going to come back over to Proxmox, we're going to come over to Options, and we want to change the start at boot option so it does start at boot. So if the server reboots or there's a power outage, anything like that, when it comes back online, the container will restart. This is pretty important because if you're going to use Pihole as your sole DNS server and it doesn't come back online, the DNS will be out in your whole environment and nothing will work right. It is important you have that checked off so it does come back online and you have no issues in your network. But that's it. Now we have Pihole running. You can come in here and you can configure all the settings how you want. You could add more block lists. You could change the themes, whatever you want. Like I said, I have a video. I'll put the card up again and you can check out the link in the description where I go over in more detail how to change all the settings, add block lists, all that stuff so you have more information on it. Today's video was really just to focus on how to set up the container for Pihole which was really super simple and I really like how containers work. It helps save resources. Now if we come over here, we can see that we're only using a little bit more RAM and we have very little CPU usage. So this is a really good option for a lightweight use for a server, especially for something simple like Pihole. So that's how we set up the Proxmox container. That's how we're gonna run Pihole on the Zimboard to try to save resources. Yeah, so that's how we're gonna do it. Hopefully it will work out. We're gonna try to add a couple more things to the server that we might need. And to save resources, we might try to use more containers. I appreciate everybody for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to like the video. Maybe drop a comment on stuff that you run containers for for Proxmox. And if you have any suggestions for anything else, I should try adding to the server so we can work on that in the future. Make sure you hit the bell button so when you do get notifications when I post videos. And I do have a Discord server if you want to join that so we can chat and we're talk about projects or anything else that might be going on. Or if you have any questions about projects in your home web. Again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.